Okay, it's exactly 930, so we can go ahead and call the Select Rural Area Services Committee of Wednesday, September 8th to order. And I assume we have a quorum. Spoken to everybody so far. Um, so first thing is adoption of the public agenda. Move adoption. Second. Seconder. All those yeah. in favor? Anderson. Anyone opposed? Sir. Um, we don't have any petitions and delegations. Um, I am advised that one of the applicants uh, will be in the room. One of the applicants will be in the room if uh, people have any questions of her. It's for an item coming up. Okay, we have adoption of previous minutes. Move adoption. Can I, can I just ask Jim which item is that? that there's a participant in the room. Watkins. I think it's a second, second one and no, it's first one in staff report. Uh, he's not okay. he's not on, on as a delegation. It's just in the room if people want to ask any questions. Did you have something to say, Dave? Uh, no, that has not been our past practice there. I don't I don't see him online. Was he sent an invite? Uh, no, I was just notified by 80 a while ago. Mr. Chairman, the, the applicant the person is, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is in the room only for the purpose of answering any questions that might arise from the committee. OK, I realize that is not our usual process. Um, so. You know. Most likely we, we will not. Um, have any discussion. OK, so did we? Vote, yeah, moved vote and seconded. Adopt, moved and seconded. Anyone opposed? Um, business arising from the minutes. Um, I did have one item on there, but I, in reading the board agenda later, I see it's on there. So that's the uh, Canis View Estates Covenant issue legal. Um, we'll talk about that later. So I, I did no business unless anybody else has one. Say again. Uh, I do just have a question if I might under business arising. OK. Uh, I Go left ahead. just uh, I left just the meeting just before the conclusion of the long range land use planning overview discussion. I was there, I think, for almost all of it, but left in the last few moments. I'm just wondering if I see there's no further motion other than receipt, but was there any um, indication of anything that the committee wanted to do further with that report? Uh, Tom or Dave, can you recall? Uh, there was no direction from the committee, but I'll uh, advise that um, we have incorporated in our one-on-one -on -one meetings that are going to come up through financial planning uh in october i believe which is next month uh the ability to look at the uh parks planning function in each of the uh ea meetings we, we didn't see okay. much purpose into continuing another report based on what the committee had and the fact that we had financial planning and the one-on-ones coming up so it's an opportunity that one-on-ones will again integrate more planning parks discussion in those meetings and integrate those in uh, in whatever comes out of them from the directors. OK, and just to follow up, then I asked a question a couple of times just for some kind of verbal update about the status of the two land use planning processes that are under review and that didn't happen in that last meeting. So I'm wondering how I can get an update from staff about uh, the zoning bylaw review here on Cortez. What's the appropriate method if not through the board? Well, you can always call Anico. OK, and uh, if I could just follow up on Director Anderson's comments, um, you mentioned that that discussion would take place 
at the one-on-ones, but I think on long-range planning, I think we had talked earlier about the um, combined long-range planning because if each director just gives their own, you know, I want to do this, 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 and this, and then uh, the list ends up being six times longer than our staff can handle, uh, somehow we have to juggle that between directors um, as far as, you know, who goes first and who's on first and that sort of thing. The, so, and so that's that's um, why we've incorporated. That, yeah, so that's why we've incorporated that in the uh, financial planning process in the one on one. So if that happens, then we can report back and say, OK, collectively we we got this kind of input. These are the things. These are the priorities. And these are the implications of resources that it will take. Either we can manage those internally or we'll need uh, additional resources for that. So it seemed to make sense to me to take that stuff into financial planning, see what comes out from the individual EAs, put that together collectively in a financial plan and say this is what it's going to take. Okay, I totally okay, so agree I would... that. Uh... If I could finish, uh, I totally agree that that's a good way to do it, but I would just say that um, there should be in that financial planning process an opportunity for us as EA directors to talk to you collectively. Um, if you come back with a report that says, you know, well, how are we going to resource this, then we should be able to have some input into that. Yeah, you will. So what we'll do is after those individual one on ones, we'll put all that information together and we bring it back to an East meeting. OK, that's great. Go ahead, if I might just just a flag, perhaps when we get to this at board, looking at the um, at the schedule for financial planning, what happened last year is that we discussed these individual one on ones. And then it did indeed come to East, but the first and only time that East saw it, we were told it was essentially too late in the planning process or the budget process to have any substantive discussion or make any substantive changes. So I would like the process this year to allow the committee to actually have some meaningful input early enough in the planning function um, so that our input can be received. So I just I'd say to my colleagues here, let's um, let's look and flag that at the board meeting later today. So, Mr. Chair, that's actually not factual. Um, Director Anderson was trying to introduce new items after the fact. There's opportunities at the one on one. It would be unreasonable to have us go through the one on one, then meet with East, come to some kind of understanding, and then put forward a um, proposed budget, and then talk about new items at that point. Uh, the process is going to include one on one. So it's going to include an East meeting. Uh, and what we get from there should be uh, the basis of uh, a budget. So I'm happy to review the recordings. That is not my memory of the experience of what happened. OK, so um, my understanding is then we will have the one on ones. We will come up with um, all of our wish list for our areas and um, financial planning will put it together um, a report will come back to east is that correct yep okay so report will come back to east we will then be able to talk about those one-on-ones and whether there's overlaps or whether it's too much or too little or whatever yep. and then yep. it will go to board yep that's i think I think that's the way we used to do it, and that's probably a, um, a good um, method for us to make sure that we get existing issues dealt with or the arising issues dealt with as long as we do it start out at the one on ones. If there are new issues come in later, then like you said, it was suggested it was too late. OK, so any other business arising from the minutes? OK. Um, 
public considerations. There are none. Under staff reports, uh, item one, development variance permit application for Watkins. Uh, report will be received. Any opposed? And Mr. Chair, John will speak to this. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. An application has been received Welcome, to. Uh, hopefully, you can. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Yep. Thanks. Um, an application has been received to allow the proposed construction of a 134 square meter garage and home office, two stories and 8.1 meters in height, and located in accordance with the setback requirements of the Campbell River Area Zoning Bylaw. The 34% height variance has been requested to allow the new garage to accommodate a boat for personal use, as well as for an oversized mezzanine to accommodate a home office and gym, as the applicant's residence is too small for these uses. And uh, the finished grade of the garage will cause the height to be less than the requ requested 8.1 meters which is the measurement taken from natural grade. And in fact, it'll be similar in height to the residence uh, next door at uh, 3709 Shoreline Drive. And um, given the considerations presented above, the proposal to grant the requested variance is supportable. And I should also mention that uh, we have received one letter of support uh, from the residents at 23 Seagull Road. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. And have you received information one way or the other from the adjacent neighbors, both sides? Uh, Mr. Chairman, no. The only letter that we received was from uh, 23 Seagull Road, which was um, uh, one of those uh, neighbors who was circulated with the variance notice. Okay, so they're not, they're not next door to Okay, uh, so anyone opposed to receipt? So moving on, uh, item B is that the committee recommend that this be approved. Mr. Chair, I'd like to move that this application be referred to the RAD APC in October. Um, this is not a minor variance. This is more than a six foot over height. I don't call that a variance, um, but I would like to have some input from both the applicants and my advisory commission uh, at the next APC meeting, which I believe is scheduled for October 3rd. So this would come back to our committee by mid-October by our first meeting in October. So I would like to uh, move deferral for the time being and then more uh, detailed questions and and um, investigation of the application can be done there first. Is there a seconder? Second. Okay, move and second at any just well, we won't have any discussion on deferral. Referral. So referral. Yeah, referral. Okay. Referral. All right. Any uh, discussion? Time so and place. For, for clarity, is referral to the APC? Is that right? Yes. Thank you. And just for uh, uh, just a point of information, the reason we hadn't referred it to the APC is because uh, it's my understanding that they haven't been meeting. Yes, but uh, I've spoken with um, planning, and they are aiming for October 3rd and the APC chair and all the APC have been notified of that. Perfect. Okay, so we have a motion to refer. Anyone opposed? Okay, that's carried. It will be referred to the APC and brought back to the October EASC meeting um, for deliberation. Okay, item two, Cortez Island Superior Tanker Shuttle Service Study. Motion to receive the report from the CAO. 
Second. Seconder? Second. Moved and seconded. Staff, anything to say? Um, well, I anything to say? I understand uh, Director Anderson has got a motion. Okay, I just thought I'd give you the opportunity before. Um, we can speak uh, to this, but whatever you prefer. I think we should hear yeah, from well, staff first and then the director. I think we should hear from staff okay. first. Sure, Sean. Uh, good morning, Electoral Area Services Committee. So this report was deferred from the August East meeting and offers options regarding the Cortez Island Fire Department becoming accredited in the Superior Tanker Shuttle Service, which is recognized as providing the equivalent service standard as a municipal hydrant system. Uh, this accreditation has the potential to provide a higher life safety service and lower home insurance ratings for portions of Cortez Island. Okay, thank you very much. And nobody, you have. Uh, well, let's just first of all do the receipt. Is there anyone opposed to receipt? Can I speak? Can I speak to receipt, please? If you, yeah, if it's to receipt, sure. Sure. Yeah. No. Before the uh, before the resolution that would happen afterwards, uh, just to advise and to thank the committee for the month uh, deferral. I was able to speak with the chairman of the board of the Cortezon Fire uh, Department. It was indeed, this study was undertaken at their request. We received a letter from the fire chief um, back in the spring, I believe. Um, it's something, a program that they've been interested in doing, but the board hasn't uh, received the, the full report. They received a draft report, I think back in May, and perhaps the full report had been received by the chairman and, and the chief, but the full board hasn't contemplated it. And in speaking at length with the chairman of the board, um, there's a number of these recommendations that the fire department is already undertaking, uh, others that uh, they would love our assistance to undertake. Um, but it seemed like before considering asking staff to you know, look at further reports with regards to financial and governance implications, that to have uh, a good discussion with the, the fire department and staff and myself would be um, I really the ideal next step. So that's what I would be moving when we get there. So just a bit of context for the committee. Thanks. OK, so on receipt, anyone opposed? It's carried. And your subsequent motion. Um, thank you. Does ED have it to bring up? Uh, that this report be referred to the Cortezal and Firefighting Association Board for a joint discussion between them, SRD staff, and the director for the area. Okay, everybody clear on that? Is there a seconder? Uh, I'll second, and I have a question though to Director Anderson. So don't you have two fire departments like at Whaletown and Madsen's? Are you going to be meeting with both of them? It's one fire department. There are indeed okay. two fire halls and contemplation of a third, but it's one one fire department that has one chief and trains together and owns equipment together and coordinates. I mean, it's, it's okay. one department. Um, and really the, the notion here is because this, this was at their request, just really punting it back to them formally because they're going to have a lot of recommendations about um, how to best proceed with the recommendations in this report, which ones are moot, which ones are you know, of interest, which ones uh, they would love our support. And so if this meeting could happen you know, sooner rather than later, it would inform our budget discussions. Certainly they have been uh, trying to find funding for more water tanks. That's a top priority. And if there's some way the regional board could assist with that, that would be fantastic. Um, they've also been putting in applications for um, reserve uh, power, which isn't technically super tanker shuttle, but if the power, if there was a significant power disruption, say on the Sunshine Coast where our cable comes from and we were out of power for a week, the diesel generator there only would last for a week and that runs power to them and the ambulance and the clinic. So there are other things that, um, structural upgrades that 
are also a real um, height of mind to them that isn't this particularly. So I think referring this to them for a discussion, you know, perhaps with Mr. Koopman and myself or whoever's deemed appropriate, the SRD would flesh out some of those um, collaboration opportunities. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Any further comment? John, did you want to say something? I see you flashing. No, Mr. Chairman, oh, sorry, okay. I should turn my microphone off. No, that's fine. Um, okay, so on the motion, uh, it's been moved and seconded. Although, is there anyone opposed? Okay, so that's going to be referred to the Cortez Island Firefighting Association Board. Moving on to Fire Services Review Electoral Area D. Report from the CAO will be received first. Second. Seconder. Okay, moving seconded. Uh, would you like staff, would you like to speak to this? Sure, uh, either Tom or John can take a shot at this. Good morning, Electoral Area Services Committee. Uh, the report before you presents the consultant's findings on the Area D Fire Service Review, which focused on the service area that receives fire suppression from the City of Campbell River through a letters patent. The map of this service area is provided on page four of the report. As staff understand this is a com comprehensive review of a major life safety service these residents receive. So today this report is presented just for receipt only so that the committee members can have time to review it. However, staff are available if there are any immediate questions. OK, any comments from anyone to staff in the way of questions? Seeing none, is there anyone opposed to receipt from the CAO's report? Let's carry. Number four, community resiliency investment grant opportunity. Move receipt. Second. CAO. Okay, moved and seconded. Um, would staff like to speak to this one? Yeah, I think Imagine we have Sean again. Sean. Good morning once again, Electoral Area Services Committee. Uh, the proposition in front of you is to receive your blessing to move this on to board for the SRD to apply for a grant for wildfire risk reduction initiatives in our electoral areas. Uh, the grant will receive 100% funding for a wildfire fuel management project on Cortez Island, obtain wildfire fuel prescriptions in the Sayward Valley area, provide wildfire training to the Cortez Island Fire Department, provide a grant to the Sayward Recreation Community Association for fire smart renovations on the Heritage Hall, offer neighborhood level fire smart assessments to all residents in the electoral areas, and finally the free driveway wood shipping service to road accessible electoral area residents. Okay, and I'd have one question if I could please. Uh, I didn't hear the mention of anything in area C which you you probably hear an inordinate amount of uh, feedback from community members in our AC about these issues. So I'm just wondering why none of that money is going to any of the programs in area C. That's to you, Sean. Yeah, so through the chair to the chair. So if you look at the grant breakdown budget in the report, we break it down by fuel uh, by fuel reduction specifically, and that's focused in Cortez Island and the Sayward Valley just because those are the only two areas that currently have an updated community wildfire protection plan. Uh, Quadra Island and Electoral Area D's community wildfire protection plans are still being updated through a grant last year, so that's why you don't see anything for Quadra Island on the fuel management part of things. And then for every single electoral areas budget breakdown, uh, Quadra Island will receive the uh, wood shipping and all residents of electoral area C will receive the neighborhood level fire smart assessments. Okay, thank you, Nova. 
Um, thank you, and thank you, Sean, for your leadership on this. I'd just love to hear a tiny bit more about what the neighborhood level fire smart assessments would do. Um, at what kind of granularity would this be? Would this be like two or 12 for the island who would undertake them? Would the community be involved? Just a, a little bit more because it sounds great, but I haven't heard of this approach before. So through the chair to Director Anderson, that's a great question. Uh, my envision is we allow the community members to tell us what that looks like for them, just given the large geographic span of what constitutes a neighborhood in some of our communities. Some are forest service roads, some are water access road only, but uh, my envision would be Bob sees this funding that's available. He reaches out to four of his immediate neighbors. They reach out to the regional district saying they want to take undertake this as an accumulative effort. The regional district provides some funding for you know, some potluck and some food so the neighbors can get together one day. A local, a trained local fire smart representative will meet with the neighbors, do a neighborhood level assessment with all of them. And if each individual resident is interested, they would also receive their own property specific level fire fire smart assessment so I don't want to get too prescriptive on it and say it has to be five households two households 12 households I'm more interested in the the concept of working with neighborhoods and then letting the residents tell us what that means for them and how they feel we can more appropriately support that in their communities so it would be um, driven by interest on the ground in neighborhoods Correct. We would uh, inform residents that there's funding for this service, some minimum criteria that they would have to meet to receive the service. I, they would have to nominate a neighborhood representative for the re for the regional district to liaise with. That neighborhood representative would be that their boots on the ground and pick a date and coordinate a time for the neighbors to get together. Great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion, comment? Oh, I'll okay, just chip anyone? in. Okay. It's Area D here. Um, I would just like to chip in. Um, literally yeah. chip in. I My residents, um, some of them uh, emailed me back and said they really appreciated the opportunity to um, have their prunings uh, you know, have the regional district supply a chipper and have those that, that would chipped up and taken away. And that's something positive for Fire Smart. Um, also, I, I would like to see um, our emergency coordinator um, talk to the Ministry of Highways about maintaining the uh, ditches and waterways because um, they actually created quite a fire hazard in my neighborhood anyway when they cut down you know grass that's growing like six feet high and then they left the the hay from the grass laying on the side of the road and then there's people walking by throwing cigarette butts into this uh dried grass like laying there all summer long i've been on ten, you know pins and needles trying to keep things cleaned up that highways leaves behind. And uh, there's some roads like Oyster Garden Road, for example, and Middle Notch Drive where um, they have neighborhood covenants to protect the large fir trees. But those fir trees drop needles and it is quite a fire hazard on the surface of the roads when you have you know, uh, a lot of needles accumulating, dried uh, fur needles. And again, we need highways to send a sweeper or something through there to move those away from where they might catch fire. So those are two things that I think we need to involve highways a little bit in. Um, so, so those are two things I'd like to see happen. And e even if you have to take money out of you know, I'm not in favor of wasting money on hats and coffee cups and things like you're planning to spend a couple thousand dollars in R.A.D. Uh, giving away some bling for the program. I don't think you need to do that. I think that the um, end result of making the community safer is an, is a reward in itself and we don't need those kind of things in R.A.D. 
So it's just, you, we don't want to waste government money. So I would rather we just uh, work towards solving some of the problems. That's it. Okay, thank you. Any further comments? Anyone opposed? Okay, so that's carried. Okay, so now we're on to bylaws. Mr. Chairman, I do believe uh, there's a B in the uh, in the report as well. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yep, move item presentation. Second. Seconder. Okay, so that's moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? We seem to have had a lot all so far. Anyone opposed? That passes. Thank you, Tom. Um, item J, bylaws, bylaw number one, number 431, Black Creek Oyster Bay water meter replacement. Report from the CAO. Anything from staff? Uh, just Mr. Chair, this is just the bylaw for the gas tax contribution that we're making to uh, the CVRD that, at the request of the area director. Move okay. receipt of report. Second. Any discussion? Anyone okay, I just I just Opposed? wanted to. Or, okay, I ahead. just wanted to explain to the committee that um, th these funds are um, matching funds. Uh, Black Creek uh, Puntledge is also contributing to replacement meters, and these are to replace just some of the meters. It's not a universal uh, metering program or anything. Uh, the meters in Black Creek Oyster Bay were installed in 1992, and some of them are not operating properly and need to be replaced. So this is a replacement program for those that need to be replaced. Um, so yeah, and it's coming out of AREDs gas tax funds. All right, any further discussion on B? Or are we still on receipt? Are you still on receipt, Mr. Chairman? Okay, on receipt. Any further discussion? Anyone opposed? It's carried. Item B. Move B. The motion is to recommend. Second. A, seconder. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Anyone opposed? It's carried. Item two, bylaws 432, 433, and I will have a subsequent after item B. Move to see. Okay, if, uh, Second. So, okay, move receipt of the CAO's report. Any discussion on the CAO's report? Okay. Um, seeing none, that's carried. Um, so item B is that the committee recommend to the board public hearing to consider bylaws 432, 433, be scheduled at a date and time to be determined. It's the first part of it. Go ahead, B. Anybody want to move that? Yeah, I'll move it. Second. Seconder. Okay, moved and seconded. Um, and then uh, the vote on that. Anyone opposed? Carried. Okay, and I, Edie, you have uh, an email from me with a motion. If you could please post that. There might be okay. a typo that a little, little bit of a typo there, but I can just read it to you quickly. But any date for a public hearing be set for a date after the mandatory vaccination passport program is successfully implemented. Well, I'd move that the okay, date for the hearing be set for a date after the mandatory vaccination program. Passport program successfully implemented. Okay, thank you. Is there a seconder? 
second. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay. Yes. Um, yes. Oh. Director Anderson. Oh, okay. And see your hand. Thank you. Um, I will need to be voting against this because at board, and I would really encourage that we all do or rescind it or something, because at board we receive a communication from the province, I guess, uh, outlining the mandatory uh, vaccination passport program and the kinds of things that uh, it will apply for. And local government is something that the mandatory vaccination passport does not apply to. Um, board meetings, public hearings, uh, these things are considered essential services, I guess, like grocery stores, and you cannot be um, excluding people who aren't vaccinated from those events. So I think that this is actually quite inappropriate, and I wouldn't have known so unless I'd read that letter. Okay, and that will come up later, and I think that uh, discussions with staff that we can go above the bar that is set by the provincial government. We don't necessarily, theirs is basically a minimum standard. So um, in this case, we are only asking that this be postponed until after the program is successfully implemented, which would be after October 23rd, which was pretty much what we had planned to do anyway in our can previous ask, motion. Can I ask then, is the intent to um, limit participation of people who have a vaccine passport? Otherwise, why would this date be set in relation to that passport rather than just a date? If you had just said after October 23rd, this discussion wouldn't have come up. But given that you're speaking about the passport, is it our intent then to somehow limit participation based on passport holding? And if so, that's a hell of a discussion. Well, if I can, Mr. Chair, I'll just chime mm -hmm. in on one one little bit of editorial. I, I think I've listened to the news and the premier enough to see that the he's trying to motivate folks to get vaccinated. And uh, I think the intent of this is to, um, on the heels of the success that the premier is trying to get um, people vaccinated, that the October 24th date uh, will have a significant increase in the number of people vaccinated. Uh, this motion doesn't say it's excluding people that are not. It's just giving that date, which I, again, I think is a motivating date that the Premier has put out um, for folks to get vaccinated. I entirely concur. And um, my question was, it, do we intend to exclude and either we haven't got there yet, I guess. I think that answer is, you know, yet to be given. So um, I, I believe, again, the intent here is to put that date to coincide with the passport in hopes that uh, the province is hugely successful in, in getting people vaccinated and, and um, deal with it like that. But it, it, it doesn't speak to specifically excluding people. Okay. So uh, Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, could I just say something? Um, I think that Director Anderson raises an interesting point because all public hearings are supposed to be, you know, open to everyone who has an interest in property, their property is affected, or they have an interest in the application. And we're implying that we're waiting for this passport to be issued before we can have public hearings. I think it would be more appropriate to just say un that uh, all public hearings in the SRD are deferred until BC public health orders are issued to, that set the criteria for public indoor gatherings during the ongoing pandemic because they have periodically issued um, orders, public health orders that no more than 50 people indoors can gather. And, you know, we may be facing that again. So we could have made this motion a little bit, you know, having heard Director Anderson, we could have made it a little bit more uh, pertinent to the criteria for public indoor gatherings and public health orders 
and just left it at that and not been prescriptive about the uh, vaccine passport because vaccine passports are only part of the solution. I mean, the main solution is everybody needs to get vaccinated. But if not everybody's going to, then the province may issue public health orders in the future to, to limit public indoor gathering numbers. And we need to be flexible to be able to meet those criteria. Okay, what you have before you is not what you just mentioned. And I think Dave explained it quite well, that this is an incentive for people to get vaccinated. It goes along with the incentive uh, put forward yesterday by uh, the Premier, the Minister, and the Public Health Officer. Um, they are trying to get everybody vaccinated, and there needs to be some kind of a carrot out there to help do that. So all we're asking for is we don't have public hearings, which are in person until after the uh, successful implementation of the passport program. Uh, we're not excluding anybody. Um, we're just setting dates and dates will be after that. So after that, anybody can come and uh, we will have whatever orders are of the day for um, attendance at public gatherings, indoor public gatherings. So we can, that's that's to follow. That's not right now. This is this is for right now because the motion before said that we are going to set at a date and time to be determined. Well, here. I am asking that the date and time to be determined will be after the vaccination program is successfully implemented. That's a totally reasonable request. So, so I'll just, you, just we'll, add, remind the committee of our, our typical process is between and now and when it would go to board, uh, we would look at the public hearing, we would look at the venues, we'd talk to the area director, and we would have a date and time and venue scheduled for that. So that's what our intent here will be to do if this motion passes. I um, uh, believe this will be a very well attended uh, public hearing. We're going to have to look at the logistics, look at facilities, dates and times. We'll do all that with the intent of having something for the board uh, when it comes to the next meeting. Okay, now thank you for that, Dave, because I know that you know, scheduling hearings at our um, hall, uh, recreation hall, which is owned by the regional district, um, it's it's a really tough situation. You know, there are usually only a couple of days uh, during a month's time that are available in the evening to have public hearings. I, the idea of, of originally was uh, when we talked about this was to try and get uh, maximum participation in the public hearing process. So, as Brenda said, everybody has a right to if they have an interest in property. Well, if they have an interest in property and they want to attend in person, um, then this gives them the opportunity to do that. Uh, we do not have the opportunity to, um, we've tried having uh, hybrid meetings where, you know, they can be done uh, virtually, we do not have internet service on this island that is that could not be challenged. You know that people did not have an opportunity because they didn't have internet. And uh, you know, I don't want to go there. I want everybody to be able to say, "Yes, I had my opportunity. I went or I didn't go. It's up to them." And um, you know, these are. A couple of the public hearings that are coming up are major ones, and um, the population of Quadra Island will want to be able to have something to say about it. So, I'm just trying to follow the wishes of my community. So, if there's any further discussion on this, if not, I'll ask for the vote. Although, or no, are there any opposed? Anderson. 
Okay, so that's one against three in favor. That's passed. Okay, so now that will repeat itself it's again at the board. It just Pardon showed me? there that Abram moved that. I think his chair. Maybe that's not, second. that's not sure who moved that. No, it, was, it was moved and seconded by someone. I can't remember who it was. But. Uh, Director Wally and Director uh, Lee were, were recorded as the mover and seconder. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Okay, so then this will most certainly come up again at the board meeting later. So we'll talk about it again there. Okay, and then we have item three. Um, Hey, bylaws 434-35, uh, additional housing density, seascape, treat them. Move a Second. Nothing from staff, okay. Mr. Chair. Nothing from staff, okay. Anyone opposed? Carried on to B. I would move B that the committee recommend bylaw 434 and 435 be forwarded to the board for first and second readings. Seconder. Second. And just uh, to note that this is an updated and I think much cleaned up application. The map is much clearer. So they're asking for uh, two additional dwellings, um, three full additional houses. Um, and I would like to ask through to staff. Um, there was a note about ongoing communications with regards to a, a public trail right of way. I would like to know if staff have anything they can share with the committee about the nature or um, progression of those discussions. And just to let the committee know that. Expect that I will be recommending um, that if we approve this, that it would be subject to a trail dedication. It was a recommendation of the APC and I think a very good one. And I expect that the community will come out requesting that. So as much work as we can do um, toward that before public hearing would be of benefit. So any update from staff would be appreciated. Thanks. John. Um, uh, thank you uh, through the chair. I understand that negotiations are still underway between the, our parks department and the applicants in respect to this uh, proposal. So I, I've nothing, I'm afraid, I can I can share with the committee uh, today. I I believe uh, Meredith, when she returns, may have some further information, but um, I do not, unfortunately. But sure. it is something that uh, will will come up um, at the public hearing. And certainly uh, the bylaws would not be approved until that issue has been resolved. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Certainly, and clearly at present, it's not an offering in the application. Um, but if if the applicant is indeed willing to offer that subject to the community and the board wanting it, um, if we could have that developed so there could be some kind of proposal to be shared at public hearing as a concept, um, that would just be really useful. I know it's expensive, um, but it's it's a, a really well used thoroughfare right now. Thank you. We have a question on that point. If this is not uh, developed and you know in writing and put forward as part of the bylaw at the public hearing, and then it comes forward after, would that not require a further public hearing? Well, if the public hearing says, hey, we want a trail and Staff. we. Mr Chairman, I um, I don't believe that uh, a public hearing, a second public hearing would be required. Um, uh, the public will have expressed their desire for a statutory right of way for trail use. And uh, so that would be a part of the um, uh, the approvals required prior to third reading and adoption of the bylaw. Thank you, John. Okay. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, if I could uh, provide a little extra information for you. Sure, thank you. Thanks. Uh, so the ongoing conversations with with the applicant uh, have continued to uh, share the desire uh, by both staff and community for the trail use uh, at public hearing. We will present any updated information with respect to that. 
the applicants are aware uh, that an amenity uh, is desirable and, and may be favorable for the success of their application. Uh, should this come forward at the public hearing and the public identify that they would support the application only where uh, a statutory right away was provided, uh, that would then come back to the board and it would be up to the board whether or not they would want to approve the application without uh, the right of way. So the details with respect to where the right of way are would be provided or where they would be would be provided at public hearing. Uh, and if the applicants are amenable, then perfect. If not, that's your consideration at uh, at third reading uh, and you can either uh, decide to continue and, and approve the, the bylaw or, or not. Mr. Chair. I would like to just say I would much rather having heard our general manager of, of um, planning. I would just I would much prefer for the trail issue to be nailed down and included in the bylaws before we give it second reading. Um, I you know I think that the public should understand what's on the table when they go to public hearing, and it should be formal. It shouldn't be something that you know, we can just negotiate after the, you know, before it gets third reading and change the bylaws. I mean, I never see us changing bylaws at third reading. We have to go back to second. It has to go back to public usually. And I just, you know, I've had, I've had public hearings in Area D where trails have been identified and they go in the package to the public hearing before the before the issue gets second reading. So I don't I don't really like this like tack it on at the last minute thing. Mr. Okay, Chair. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the uh, the statutory right of way is not a requirement of consideration for rezoning. The applicants have put forward the request for rezoning to allow for the density requested. And as part of that, it has been communicated to the applicants that an amenity would be desirable as part of their rezoning in exchange for the density that they are requesting. But staff cannot require the applicants to provide said amenity. We do have trail information. We do know where the trail should go. We know the width of the trail that we would like. That information will be shared to the public at public hearing. That detail does not need to be um, necessarily included in, in, in the rezoning application to that degree. Uh, we can continue on with the statutory right of way requirements if they are amenable to that and not approve uh, the final approval of the bylaw until that statutory right of way has been registered uh, on title. But again, it's not a requirement. Uh, and if the applicants want to proceed without providing that amenity, then that's up to the board for their consideration at, at third reading. Thank you. Okay, may I ask you, Monica, while you're on, um, it, the, you're calling it an amenity. So if it's an amenity, then there was some sort of, of uh, give and take. What did they receive as a bonus to require an amenity? And again, there's there's no requirement for an amenity. The bylaw doesn't outline uh, density bonusing requirements. It's just the language that is used when we consider a rezoning application that if there are desirable things that would be considered amenity, that those are discussed at the time of the rezoning. But there are no requirements in any of our bylaws for um, density bonusing provisions in this case. Okay, thank you. Noba? I have another question. Noba was next. I was going to say less articulately what Onico said, um, just to reiterate very briefly, I let it known to the applicant that they would much more likely receive my support with the trail, but it's the corporation with many uh, shareholders involved and they just haven't got to that yet. So I, I do feel comfortable proceeding to public hearing with what they have proposed. Um, it will come up and I'm just really grateful to hear that staff has um, sort of a, a trail location in mind and that that can be brought forward for discussion. And if that is something that public want 
and something that I recommend and something this committee and ultimately board support, we can certainly amend at third and I'm very comfortable with that. Thank you. Brenda? My question uh, through the chair to our general manager of planning. So in the Local Government Act, um, applicants who have uh, subdivisions with more than three lots created need to give 5% back to the community. And that's a requirement in the Local Government Act. So why isn't this trail being considered part of the 5%? Mr. Chairman, perhaps I should jump in here. Um, <clears throat> The committee right now is dealing with a rezoning bylaw and and you cannot put conditional phrases into such a thing it's either it's going to be rezoned or it's not now there are subsequent processes like subdivision which if that's part of this process that's the time to address things like um, rights of way etc cetera, etc cetera. so there are reasons why these conditions or conditional approvals are not part of the rezoning process per se they can be dealt with outside of that and certainly if there's a willingness to agree by the developer to um, amenities, then it makes it much easier. But right now, the committee is dealing simply with a rezoning of the property. Um, and as was stated previously, it would complicate things enormously and I think imperil the bylaw to start attaching conditions written into the bylaw itself. Thank you. But if that didn't, I, I get Thank that, you, but that, that doesn't answer my question. Are they not required under the Local Government Act to offer the regional district 5% of the value of the land or cash um, when they're creating a subdivision with more than three lots? Mr. Chair, if you'd like me to answer that. Yeah. Go ahead, Monica. Thank you. Uh, to Director Lee, this application does not include a subdivision and will not include a subdivision in the future with the applicant's current plan. So no, the requirement for 5% uh, does not factor into this application. Okay, thank you. Okay, and did you still want to speak, Noba? Th thank you. I, I just wanted to pause and underline what I heard Tom say because it's not been my understanding or the nature of this discussion so far. So I just want to make sure I really understand what I'm hearing Mr. Yates say is that after public hearing, if the public wants a trail and this committee and board want a trail, that we can't say you can have your rezoning subject to putting a trail in. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Yates? Because that's not been the nature of the discussion so far. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm saying that, that that it enters an area that is fraught with a potential conflict. And so um, what you cannot do is put is add another clause into the rezoning bylaw to say something like um, <clears throat> adoption of this bylaw is dependent upon dedication of a trail through rights of way or something along those lines. Uh, th there may be other processes and I'm not too familiar with this particular application. Uh, that would be something for the manager of planning to stick out and I think she is. Um, but in, in terms of complicating the process, if you want to, as a committee, recommend that the bylaw itself contain wording or language that requires a dedication of a right of way for trail purposes, I think you will imperil the bylaw by doing that. Okay, is that clear now? Bylaws are not conditional. Thank you. So I, I think the only thing to do is move forward with the application that has been presented because it is the right of any landowner to apply. Um, and I'll uh, have further conversation with staff because this this will come up and it'd be great to not snap through the process. Thanks. OK, so it's been moved and seconded item B. Um, anyone opposed? That's carried. Item C. Uh, move C that the committee recommend the board authorize a public hearing to consider bylaw 434 and 435 and that the public hearing be held at the date and time to be determined. Seconder. Second. Okay, seconded. Discussion. Seeing none, and that will pass. 
You have to yeah. call. Is anyone opposed? Did I not? No. I thought I, I thought I did. Okay. Anyone opposed? Okay. Seeing none. All those. Uh, well, no. We'll just move on down. Um, that one's done, and that brings us to the final items, which have nothing in them, which would mean item P. Move termination. Second. Anyone opposed? Thank you very much, everyone. And Thanks, we'll everyone. Thanks, Jim. See you in two hours. Thank you.